the nuclear renaissance is for real, as pointed out on that earlier chart. Uh, the demand forecasts don't even include the small modular reactors, nor do they include uh, some of the uh, plant uh, extensions and licenses, et cetera. So simple fact of the matter is you cannot have green energy with low carbon footprints without nuclear energy based on current technology. And it's going to remain that way for decades. It's quite simply not a perfect solution, but it's the best we've got. And it's a very good one. The safety record is unparalleled. In spite of uh, some of the media hype and hysteria, the uh, number of uh, employee accidents is, is minimal and equated to solar energy, far, far, four orders of magnitude less than coal, three than oil and gas. So it's a, it's a superior technology. One of the major benefits is its energy density. Just to give you an idea, this one nuclear pellet replica is the equivalent of one ton of coal or three barrels of oil in terms of its energy. Eight or 10 of those will, will uh, fuel a, a very uh, large in uh, residential house during the year. So anyway, uh, the deficit that uh, Nick uh, alluded to is primarily within the US. The US uh, consumed 47 million pounds of uranium last year and we produced 9,000 or essentially zero. And uh, this is uh, not because we don't have it, it's simply because we've grown reliant upon very cheap imports largely through Kazakhstan uh, and Russia, both of which supplies go through the port of St. Petersburg, which is somewhat problematic these days. We'll be making some forward-looking statements. Just to show you the uh, graph on your right, the green is the U.S. production. You can almost pinpoint the day the Cold War was over and we quit producing our own uranium and started importing dirt cheap uranium from, from Russia. Uh, that is, uh, is not going to continue. They do supply about 60% of our uranium coming through the port of St. Petersburg. And that is shifting heavily towards Asia. Recently, Cameco announced their Kazakh production was going to Asia contracts in the future. Also, the Russian security force in Kazakhstan has been largely replaced by Chinese interests. So a uh, definite switch there, and uh, it's going to really take, uh, take its toll. Just a word on the nuclear fuel cycle so you understand it's a lengthy process from the day we actually produce yellow cake until the day it goes into a reactor is about two to two and a half years. We send it to, uh, uh, once we produce the yellow cake, we send it to a, a conversion facility where it's turned into UF6, uranium hexafluoride. That then goes to the enrichment plant, spun down in centrifuges, and uh, then that uh, uh, enriches it from 0.7% U235 to roughly 5%. That goes to the fabrication plant where they fabricate these into a fuel rod assemblies that ultimately go into the nuclear fuel plant. So even though you may hear of an event in the uranium market, it may be a ripple that comes up a little bit later because each of these aspects of the fuel cycle are contracted independently by the nuclear uh, uh, electricity generator. We're 100% focused in Texas for our first three years. Our objective is 3 million pounds a year run rate within the next three years. We have three of the 11 licensed plants in the United States, and uh, uh, all of our assets in Texas are within about a 75-mile radius from our operational headquarters in Corpus Christi, so we gain a great deal of efficiency having that concentration. We have a very deep staff of uh, people that are experts in uranium ISR. Not only from the board level down, we have uh, probably, well, our entire board is, is deeply experienced, 35 to 40 years experience in the business, including the co-inventor of the process for in situ. Uh, when you get down into the operations team, we've got about 40 people on staff that have actually produced uranium through, largely through the in situ means in the U.S. So uh, we're well staffed and, and able to uh, jump right in and uh, uh, with some recruiting of uh, general laborers actually run two plants uh, over the course of the next 12 months. Uh, we also have a very blended uranium sales strategy, roughly half of it exposed to spot and half of it exposed to contract. Keep in mind the spot market, while it gains the headlines, is, is a very small percentage of the uh, amount of total trade and uh, the contracts that we do enter to are somewhat related to spot with typical floors and, and ceilings. And those floors and ceilings have been expanding uh, rather dramatically over the course of the last year. We also have a number of other non-core assets that uh, help beef up the uh, balance sheet as we move forward. Uh, this is uh, the uranium price over the last uh, uh, two decades. Uh, most of our team came out of Energy Metals Corp. And uh, that was a quite successful venture in 04. We started a 1.7 million market cap, uh, generating uh, a number of assets in that company. 
uh, including uh, renovating and building uh, one of the ISR plants in Texas that we no longer own. It's now UEC's. Uh, joined Uranium One after the buyout for $1.8 billion 30 months later. Started Encore and had a 10-year period to plan our future because it was right before Fukushima. And uh, so we've had 10 years to uh, plan our future. 2019, we saw sea change coming. We made a move and bought two of the licensed plants in Texas. And I've spent the last uh, bit of time uh, renovating that. Uh, pro forma with a couple of recent uh, financings we've announced, the most recent of which was this last week after listing on the NYSE American. Uh, we've got 140 million shares out uh, uh, pro forma. Market cap will be about 400 million. Our uh, production timeline that we're looking at, uh, our objectives are to get Rosita extension. The plant's been fully renovated and we'd like to get that in production uh, with a ramp up late this year. Uh, it's a very short-lived asset from the spot there, but the nice thing about these plants is they operate on hub and spoke. And you'll be seeing uh, further developments come along with our Spring Creek deposit, which will ultimately feed that plant as well as the uh, re limited resources actually at the plant site. The big news, of course, is Alta Mesa, the most recent acquisition we got. It's about 19 million pounds in all categories. And uh, this is a 2 million pound a year capacity plant. Uh, our CEO actually built this for a private company, and then it went to Energy Fuels, and we're in the process of closing that transaction. Uh, and that should uh, see in the next week or two. Ultimately, uh, we'll be ramping up the three plants in Texas. Uh, we'll be moving into South Dakota on the Dewey Burdock project some uh, uh, three or four years down the road, then bringing Wyoming on uh, as well. Should mention Texas and Wyoming are very favorable places to be. These are both agreement states, which tremendously limits your involvement with the federal government. Obviously, anytime you can limit your dealings with the federal government, it certainly streamlines things and costs a whole lot less. I also point out that uh, all three of these uh, primary states, uh, Texas, South Dakota, and Wyoming, are extremely positive pro-business states. Uh, we're waiting to begin. Uh, we do have our federal permits in South Dakota. There have been some challenges to those by the uh, Ogallala Sioux. Uh, we've prevailed through the uh, uh, District Appeals Court. The last uh, route of appeal is through the Supreme Court. We'll know with that in the next few days, the next few weeks rather. Don't expect they to actually pick it up. Ultimately, we have a huge resource in New Mexico. New Mexico has uh, certain issues that uh, it's not as pro-business as the others I may have mentioned, as well as there's a significant uh, issue of bringing along the Aboriginal community, that is the Navajo Nation. So uh, that's going to take some time, but it's going to be well worth it as we control over half of uh, the U.S.'s largest uranium district, that being New Mexico. Here's some uh, details on the Alta Mesa transaction. We spent $120 million, half of that in cash, half of it in a vendor take-back note. Uh, very large property, 200,000 acres of mineral rights in Texas, and that's big in any jurisdiction, but especially Texas when it's right in the heart of the mineral belt. And you can see these circles are areas that will be satellite fields going into our three processing plants that you can see with the uh, a little uh, 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 caption boxes. Uh, in any event, uh, this provides us a very solid base and foundation to reach our goal of three million pounds a year over the course of the next three years. Going on, uh, looking a little bit further with the limited time here, Dewey Burdock is a 17 million pound project. I'll point out it doesn't know where the Nebraska-Wyoming border is. Uh, the mineralization continues across into Wyoming, but, uh, or sorry, where the South Dakota uh, Wyoming Breton border is. Does continue on into Wyoming, but uh, obviously the permitting issue there is South Dakota, so that's been done first. Plenty of time to move on into uh, Wyoming. Multi decade project. Also, very robust economics, 2019 economic study showing a very healthy and robust IRR. You've got to add about 40% to these costs but you can also add about 50% to the revenue because the uranium price used has gone up. Similarly, the Gas Hills project in Wyoming, most of these, in fact, all these projects I've mentioned have an ore grade of 0.1% uranium. Pales by comparison to Athabasca, but so do our costs, and so does our development time, and so does our reclamation. So it, it all provides for very healthy, very rapid uh, development and, and production. Uh, this uh, economic study was done uh, about a year and a half ago. So add 20% to your costs, uh, roughly, and uh, here again, at a low uranium price. So the IRR that's uh, rather robust will, uh, will only grow. Showing our dominant position in New Mexico, each of the stars are in fact deposits. Uh, we've got uh, historic resources of uh, some 60 million pounds, about 44 million pounds of indicated mineralization. 
And uh, that's our path line to uh, production. We've got a very robust uh, uh, plan. We'll get to five million pounds, hopefully over five years, and uh, not including New Mexico. Once we finally uh, get into New Mexico, we'll look to boost that up around seven or eight million pounds.